Well, hi everybody. It's just so good to, to see you all. Um, wonderful. Okay, I'm, I'm uh, on furlough and I haven't stepped inside the Jesus Centre for seven weeks now. I woke up this morning and I thought of a new challenge. How many exercises can I do with two chairs in my front room? Um, so that's my little challenge for this week. Now, uh, Faranak has been trying to keep us busy doing courses while we've been on furlough, people that work at the Jesus Centre. And this week I've been doing a course on supporting uh, people from the Jesus Centre and also staff members uh, during the pandemic. It's been really helpful. And I found a particular quote, which I'm going to share with you and share the screen with you now. Okay, this is what it's, this is part of the course. And uh, I'll read it to you. Maintaining positive relationships. Positive, healthy relationships are the most important factor when it comes to helping people cope with and recover from trauma. Good relationships will therefore be essential in our response to the current coronavirus crisis. Well, I thought that was pretty good, but now, Nick, if you could just turn over to the uh, the Bible reading for us, I think Paul does even better. This is from Thessalonians. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father, when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. Everybody, the first quote was really good, but this is so much better because God is breathing through it. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everybody else. May he strengthen your hearts so you'll be blameless and holy. We just want God to breathe into our hearts, breathe into our relationships so that what we are is Jesus, is Jesus' life to one another. Well, today I just want to, to really encourage you us all well of life because when I've watched what's going on in the last few weeks there's just been so many good things going on. Networking has been very very strong, WhatsApp, small groups, hubs, catch the fire and all the constant crisscrossing um, we have with each other it's actually been brilliant. Uh, zooming, we've all been zooming and so good to see everybody on Sundays. Prayer requests are being passed around either on WhatsApp, text messages. Very, very good. Um, Betty and Ruth continuing with their praying on, I think it's Thursday mornings. Lots of prayer going on. Great to pray for Steve's um, friends um, when they got to uh, the virus and glad to hear that they're recovering. Um, I'd just like to say to everybody, if, if anybody does feel still a little bit left, left out, please tell somebody. You know, you just think, I just need a phone call. Wednesday night about nine o'clock, I got a text message from someone and they said, Julia, I'm really not okay. Please, can you ring me? That was a fantastic thing to do. And we talked and prayed together. Um, please don't be afraid to share your need. Uh, also, 
let's just be aware of people who aren't connected digitally. Uh, there's a few people in our congregation who don't do WhatsApp, don't do internet. Uh, if we can, please let's contact them. Well, we're in a tunnel and we may see a tiny light at the end, but I think we all know it's going to be a long haul. And after lockdown, things will not return to as they've been. Everybody, let's pray for our government. And to use an expression familiar to some of us, we need to win this peace as well as the war. What will life look like after COVID? Okay, it's, it's showing up the poverty of parts of the UK way of life, uh, the rush that many people like myself live in uh, without time to press that pause button. It's showing up a lot of inequality and disconnection with our neighbours. However, it's also shown up some wonderful people and some wonderful schemes. And by the way, the food, the food uh, bank, Coventry Food Bank, got broken into this week. So if anybody wants to uh, move in a little bit of generosity to send them some food, that would be great. Lockdown has given a glimpse of a liberated springtime with less noise and air pollution. Our church is in transition. What will we look like at the end? Because we've connected digitally in a way we couldn't have imagined even four months ago. And for me, the increased connection and support networks with neighbours and family members has sprung up almost overnight. And we've begun to think about pe each other's needs in a new way. I've been doing church with my neighbour, not digitally, but through a window. In fact, we're going to be doing it at half past 12 today. She gets out a piano accordion and we sing out of the window and, and uh, read out Bible verses and pray out of the window. My pace of life has slowed down. I know some of you that are doing homeschooling, you probably can't say that. Um, but also I found a, a new sense of appreciation for the basic things of life. And I think I'm beginning to discern more what's important and what's not quite so important. So what is the future? Well, at the moment, it might all seem like a dark winter, but already the springtime season of renewal and change is here. So what's God saying to us in all this? I don't really know. But look, if you've got any inspirations, perhaps put them on the WhatsApp group or perhaps text, uh, email, phone the leaders. We, we want to hear from God at this time in this formative time in our church as i say springtime we can see many elements of springtime with us okay uh, back to my course um it was called helping people with trauma something like that and the words they used on this course were very helpful key words trust working together Helping people to make their own choices, fantastic. And empowerment, a lot of wisdom there. Empowerment is a word that's actually very, very close uh, to my heart. Because in ordinary times or in times of huge difficulty, we all need courage to step out into new challenges. But it's quite difficult on our own. At this time, in the future, we can empower one another. And I want us to look at three letters. A, W, E, which is or. And again, I'm going to turn and share the screen. Okay, here we are. Or it's an it's what we call an acronym. It stands for three words, and this is all about empowerment. The 
first one is ask or invite. Now, during uh, my time on furlough, I'm not actually allowed to do any work. I'm not allowed to lead the Bible studies on Tuesday at the Jesus Centre. So what have I done? I've had to invite Leslie. Great to see you, Leslie, here today uh, to lead it. And actually, it's been great for me to step back and to see somebody else do something. Leslie has done a fantastic job and I can see her skills abounding really you know we have a little time of feedback at the end and we talk about ways we can improve it but she's doing it and she's doing it really well empowerment next one a word in season we can empower people by a word in season now I've got to quote Piers at this stage because uh, quite a few years ago now I was uh, feeling quite frustrated uh, in some ways in my life and I went to this uh, trade show I was working in a food shop and there was Piers and Piers said to me how are you doing so I said well okay but you know I, I don't actually feel that fulfilled in my life and he gave me a word in season. And he said, Julia, it's one sentence only, and it's stuck in my mind ever since. Julia, if you've got a brain, use it. Why not write a book or learn a language or something like that? And actually, in some measure, I did both those things. It was a word in season that actually set me free to think my life's not just going to be plodding on and plodding on, trying to be faithful. I'm going to do things. I'm going to break out. I'm going to use the gifts God's given me. And it was a very, very empowering moment, a life-changing moment in my life. Thank you, Piers. Uh, the last one is just to encourage. And I think the important thing is, it's great to tell people what they are doing right. So easy to say what this is, especially true with children and obviously my, you know, my students at the Jesus Centre, but tell each other what they're doing right. Tell them the gifts that you see in them. Now, sometimes after a Sunday morning like this, I sometimes go home and thinking, I don't want to do that again. And, you know, you're probably feeling a bit deflated. And then someone just sends a text and says, hey, thanks for that. That really blessed me and instead of thinking I never want to do it again I suddenly think yeah I can I can do it again a tiny tiny word of encouragement does wonders uh, the Apostle Paul is a is a huge inspiration to me in terms of uh, empowerment earlier I read from Thessalonians. If we read Acts 16, we, we read of Paul going to Thessalonica and he only stayed less than, probably less than three months because he had to flee. He was being persecuted. A few months later, he wrote his letter to Thessalonians, which we read today. If you read that letter, actually want to do it this week one Thessalonians that is the way to empower people he knows how to encourage he knows how to build up and his little corrections are scattered between but basically it's love affirmation empowerment a fantastic letter now in a few minutes we're going to split into groups uh, very good last week and great opportunity to just say, oh, how are you getting on? Anything I can pray for? But also, maybe you've got a little word of encouragement or a little word in season for someone. And maybe you won't say it today, but maybe during the week, you've got that for somebody. When I go back to that word Piers gave to me some years ago, it was such a tiny thing, but it had such huge consequences in my life. Our words of encouragement, our words in season, our opening the door 
people like Leslie, it actually has huge uh, effects in people's lives. So let's be open to that, not just this morning, but this coming week. Okay, I think that's it. I'm just going to quickly pray and then I'm going to hand on to Steve. Thanks everybody for listening. So, Father, thank you. Thank you for your great love that infuses our hearts. It is in your strength and in your Holy Spirit that we can love each other and reach out to each other more. Help us just to be open to your inspirations at this time as we reach out in completely different ways. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Okay, Steve.